let us move now to the joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council, the Glendale Redevelopment Agency, and the Glendale Housing Authority. Mr. Kasaki, and if you could call the roll for the council. Council members Najarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Yousefian. Here. Mayor Draymond. Here. And for the agency. Agency members Draymond. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Yousefian. Here. Chairman Najarian. Here. For the authority. Authority members Draymond. Here. Mincy. Here. Najarian. Here. Fazian. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Chairman Yousefian. Here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kasakian, could we... Uh, Certainly. Could we have the item, please? The agenda for the June 17, 2008 joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Redevelopment Agency and the Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, June 12, 2008 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. The item today is Director of Community Development and Housing and Development Services jointly to uh, present to you the proposed smoking prohibitions and limitations on secondhand smoke. Okay. And 1A. And 1A is a council motion providing direction to staff. And 1B is? One second. I'm still writing. At B is an agency motion directing staff to prepare an amendment to the rules and regulations contained in the Declaration of Reciprocal Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions and Easements for the American App brand to incorporate prohibition of smoking in the agency-owned open space. And that is all before you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kasak. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, City Manager, who are we going to with the uh, report? Mr. Mayor, the uh, lucky administrator will give you the, a brief staff report is uh, Sam Engel. Sam? Thank you, Mr. Starbird. Mayor Draymond, Chair Yosefian, Chair Nigerian, members of the City Council, Housing Authority, and Redevelopment Agency. Tonight we're considering a draft ordinance revising Chapter 8.52 of the Municipal Code, which would expand the limitation on smoking in locations where secondhand smoke might affect other individuals. This is being presented at a joint meeting of all three bodies because certain provisions could impact properties and projects under the jurisdiction of the Redevelopment Agency and other provisions could set housing policy for the city. It was important for the issues to be identified and addressed in a common forum. Realizing that the City Council expressed a desire that this meeting serve as a forum for community feedback on this issue, staff has worked hard to spread the word about tonight's meeting. We can provide greater detail on this later on if you need that. Earlier in the meeting, we distributed to a letter that we just received today from Dr. Jonathan Fielding, who is the director of the Department of Public Health for the County of Los Angeles and also the county's chief health officer, who contacted us in response to this outreach effort. Dr. Fielding's letter lists the various medical reasons that might justify a community taking steps to lower the exposure of its residents, workers, and guests to secondhand smoke. We felt this letter might prove helpful to the Council's consideration of this issue, so that's why we presented it to you today. The draft ordinance that's before you tonight takes a comprehensive approach to dealing with secondhand smoke, both in terms of its prohibitions and its specifications where smoking might be permitted. For your consideration and how we approach the ordinance, there's really four components that are a part of it. The first component considers restrictions for smoking on public property. The second component deals with restrictions on smoking in or on private property that is open and accessible to the public. The third component deals with restrictions on smoking in multi-unit housing. And the fourth component really deals with all the miscellaneous provisions that are part of a comprehensive ordinance. All of those are part of the written report, and I'm not going to talk about those tonight, but you have all of that already. In summary, it's important to note that while the ordinance is comprehensive in scope, it does not comprehensively prohibit smoking. Smoking is still permitted in many locations, as noted in its purpose, and I want to read this in the record. It is the attempt of the ordinance to strike a reasonable balance between smokers and others who desire to breathe smoke-free air while recognizing that only 15% of the population are smokers. Finally, one last point before we before I complete my report, the council asked for specific information from our adjoining cities, and I would like to let everybody know about those things. Specifically, the council asked about Burbank and Pasadena, and I'm going to read directly from the stuff that, the, that I prepared for you tonight. Um, Burbank has already adopted a smoke-free ordinance, and that has been in place now for them for a little over, almost 18 months. July 1st, it will be 18 months. Um, they gave us some reports on how they felt it had been successful in doing exactly what they intended to do, which was provide 
um, healthy open space in their community. They had a couple of blips that they felt, and um, first off was they felt that while they focused on education, uh, if they were to go back and do it over again, they would focus their education on visitors to the community. They felt that members of their community got it really quick and that where they had the issues in terms of people adjusting to their new regulations was with people who were coming to the city for the first time or visiting from out of town who may not be familiar. Um, second of all, they already limit smoking uh, in the common areas of multifamily units a little bit less severely than the ordinance that is before you tonight, but um, not much. Um, both Burbank and Pasadena have told us that they intend to address smoking in multi-unit housing, similar to what the ordinance in front of you does. Burbank says that they will be tackling the issue in their next revise of their smoking ordinance, which they estimate will be in front of their council within the next six months. Um, as I noted before, they already limit smoking in the common areas of multi-unit uh, buildings. Um, Last but not least, I want to stress the, that Burbank's emphasis was on um, education as a part of their enforcement. Uh, they went so far as to hire someone which was a smoking educator to work with businesses, um, business owners, and visitors to their commercial areas. They felt that that was the key to community acceptance of their new regulations. And with that, everything else that uh, was a part of this is in the written report and will be available to answer questions as you continue. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. You. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Um, let me again ask my colleagues whether they'd like to make some opening comments before we go to the public and then come back, or whether you would like to just go directly. And I should explain, by the way, before we do that, uh, because this doesn't happen that often, uh, that if you're in the audience or tuning in, that you see some faces that may not be quite as familiar to you up here on the dais. It's because we are in a joint meeting of the council. The Housing Authority, which includes members not on the City Council and the Redevelopment Agency. So that's why you're seeing some faces up here, Mr. Mincy and the Sparazian, who you don't normally see uh, perhaps at Council meetings in the evening. You'd see them in the, uh, in the afternoon if you were to tune into our Housing Authority meetings. Okay. So uh, let me go to my colleagues and ask if they have any. Yes, Mr. Yusei. Uh, I just have a question from. Uh Sam, you mentioned about Burbank and Pasadena. You talked all about Burbank, didn't say anything about Pasadena. Unless it's the same thing as Burbank. Councilman Yusefian, uh, Pasadena City Council, there used to be a city commission, Pasadena City Council um, met in May and they, di they did what you're doing tonight. They directed staff to come back or actually what you did in March. They directed staff to come back with an ordinance. Their ordinance was, their council directed them to come back with a comprehensive ordinance. They will be presenting that to council, as I understand it, in August sometime. So they, they haven't adopted it? No. But they intended, what they told us when we asked them is it is a comprehensive ordinance, very similar to what you got tonight, with the exception that it doesn't actually deal with this, the um, percentage of units being declared non-smoking. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Brazian, any comments before we go to the public? No. Mr. Mincy, Mr. Yusefian. All right, let's go to the public. Uh, let's start with Elaine Alexander, three, followed by Phyllis Meisler. Mayor Draymond, How are you? council members and staff, my name is Elaine Alexander. I have lived in Glendale for most of my life, and even though I never smoked, less than 10 years ago I was diagnosed with asthma. Recent surveys involving Glendale have shown that asthma rates in our city jump between 40% and 105%, depending on age, between 2004 and 2007. Due to the harmful effects of secondhand smoke, which have been proven, I'm urging you to enact an anti-smoking ordinance in line with those already existing in Burbank, Calabasas, and Santa Monica, as well as those proposed in Pasadena and other Southern California cities. The ordinance should at least include restaurants, waiting lines, bus stops, public buildings, offices, public open space such as farmers markets, as well as 20 feet from public areas. The reason for anti-smoking ordinance are obvious. 
the reduction in health risks to us as well as our children and grandchildren, reduction of fire danger in a, in a known hazard area, and the reduction of already existing litter problems. There is absolutely no reason not to enact and more importantly enforce an anti-smoking ordinance in the city of Glendale. Because of what I have outlined above, my only question to you would be, why has it taken so long? Since you were elected to represent the citizens, the citizens of Glendale and our health, safety, and welfare are of primary concern to you, I am sure you will do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Phyllis Meisler, uh, followed by Bibian Ron. Mayor Dreamin and the rest of the council members, thank you for this opportunity to address this body. I want to start out by saying, and don't hurt me, okay, <laughs> that I am actually speaking against adoption of this ordinance. And I want to tell you my background. I'm a mental health professional, so I really have a different perspective, perhaps, although I am a health professional in that sense, but coming from a different angle on all this, and that I worked extensively with children and adolescents and their families primarily in the area of prevention of child abuse. I want to thank this coalition for a healthier community there for exposing a big lie in the paper Actually, their lie exposes itself, and that is regarding asthma. It claims that asthma has increased for the three or four years between 2004 and the present, has gone up 40% for those 20 years old and younger, and up 105% for those 25 to 64. However, the fact is smoking has decreased in this country over the last 20 years and has actually gone down from over 50% of the population smoking to today less than 25%. I know you mentioned 15%, but I've seen figures maybe around 30% for Glenville. So you would expect that with the decrease in smoking, there would have been a concomitant, consistent, or decrease of asthma. Why, yet, you see a decrease in smoking that's significant and a significant increase in asthma. You, in other words, I don't think you can say there's a one-to-one -one correlation. In fact, you get the opposite there seems to be an inverse proportional relationship between the two factors. And so I have to take a step back and think perhaps there are other factors involved in illness and asthma. And I want to refer, I'm actually, I'd like to refer to some facts. I want to refer the committee to a four-hour documentary, film documentary, Unnatural Causes. And I've brought something to submit to the committee in their consideration. This film details Maybe studies that were Ms. done Meisler, I have 30 to ask you, years. I have to ask you to conclude. Okay. If you do okay. have something for the, for the yes, council, of course, you may and leave it, it with the city clerk. Yes, it speaks to as well. And I want to ask... First of all, these people who are sensitive to smoke also said this. Ma'am, I have to ask okay. you to conclude. Your time is up. I'm, I'm sorry. asking the, the council please not to adopt this ordinance and not to turn our community into that where neighbor spies on neighbor and can perhaps have the police knock on their door at 2 o'clock suspecting okay. someone had a thank cigarette in their bathroom. Ma'am, I have to stop you there, okay. but I thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, Vivian Roan, followed by David Reagan-George. Good evening. 
My name is Vivian Rowan. Excuse I me, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just interrupt you for one minute. I've had a request, and, and it's a good one. If I could ask you all to turn off your phones and pagers and cell phones. Does anybody still have a pager? Anyway, phones and pagers <laughs> and cell phones. Uh, we'll just get that housekeeping out of the way now. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Let's let's start your time over. Oh, my name is Vivian Rowan. I am a Glendale resident and live at Chevy Chase Drive. And I'm also a volunteer for the Los Angeles County Division of the American Heart Association. I'll be brief with my comments, but I want to make sure that I stress to you the fact that imposing regulation on outdoor smoking is important and the next and the most logical step in protecting Glendale residents from the effects secondhand to smoke. The American Heart Association congratulates the city of Glendale for most recently taking the needed steps to, in recognizing the need to protect its residents and visitors from exposure to the danger of the secondhand smoke. Regulating smoking in public places is an important step toward changing people's attitude toward smoking and discouraging the dangerous behavior of tobacco use near used near the non-tobacco user like our children. On behalf of the American Heart Association, we thank you, the mayor, and the rest of the city council for your support on tobacco control issues. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, David Reagan George, followed by Esther Schiller. Thank you, mayor, uh, council members, other officials. Um, my wife and I are residents. Name for the record, please. Sir, state name. your name for the record. Hey, oh, my name is David Reagan George. Uh, my wife and I are residents of Glendale. We've been back in Glendale for a couple of years. We were away for 10 years, uh, but we lived in Glendale before that. Um, we really love Glendale, and we just wanted to come to throw our support behind uh, the adoption of these ordinance, these non-smoking ordinances. Um, we actually have started to shop uh, and go to restaurants and uh, things like that in Burbank because a lot of times when we're walking through the streets of Glendale, we end up walking through clouds of smoke. And my wife has asthma. Now, the other woman talked about there being perhaps not a direct relation between smoking causing asthma. But that, to, to us, is irrelevant because smoking triggers asthma. And my, in fact, we have a problem in, the, in our building where we live because we just actually, to come here, walked out through a cloud of smoke. Somebody was smoking in the courtyard. They've been asked not to, but they do it anyway. My wife is wheezing right now because she's, she was walking through smoke. So um, I think there's actually an economic uh, benefit to Glendale to, to, uh, to make the, pass these smoking ordinances because I know that just the two of us, we no longer do as much business in Glendale because we can go to Burbank, where, where the smoking ordinances have been, uh, the non-smoking ordinances have been passed, um, and also because of our experience with uh, our building and, and and people smoking in the courtyard um, and our trouble with that, I, I I think that those ordinances should be passed as well for the multi-unit um, buildings. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Schiller, followed by Marlene Gomez. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, staff, and community members. My name is Esther Schiller. I'm the Executive Director of Safe Smoke-Free Air for Everyone. Our organization was founded in 1992 by people who were made very sick by tobacco smoke where they worked. We've provided a packet for you this evening. The packet includes the results from our survey of 251 Glendale apartment residents and a copy also of our results from surveys of apartment residents in the city of Los Angeles. The survey results in both cities are remarkably similar. In Glendale, 79.3% of survey respondents said they would prefer to live in the non-smoking part of a building. That included 32.9% of current tobacco users and 99% of non-tobacco users. 74% said they would prefer to live in a completely smoke-free building. 
Other materials in the packet include a call to action from the Campaign for Smoke-Free Choice in Multi-Unit Housing, which consists of, it's a coalition that consists of the American Cancer Society, the American Lung Association, and many other groups. This coalition suggests that non-smoking sections need to be available in apartments just as they are in hotels, so that especially so that people with chronic illnesses can be accommodated. And that also very important is that prospective tenants need to be informed before they move in where the smoking permitted units are located and where the designated outdoor smoking area, if, if there is one, is located. Also, the members of the coalition suggest that involuntary exposure to tobacco smoke should be declared a nuisance by city councils. Also in the packet is a letter from the Armenian Relief Society Social Services, which expresses support for the concept of improving the quality of life in the city of Glendale by adopting policies which more strongly regulate the use of tobacco products in outer public areas and in multi-unit housing. Thank you so much, and we're available for questions. Thank you. Uh, Marlene Gomez, followed by Jason Weber. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, North Hill City Council, and the community um, and staff. My name is Marlene Gomez. I am the project director of SAFE, Smoke Free Air for Everyone. Um, I'm going to follow up on some of the um, statistics that we found in the survey we conducted among um, the Glendale residents. Um, the survey results, again, were remarkably similar to surveys we conducted in the city of Los Angeles and other cities. More than one third of respondents said they had tobacco smoke drifting into their apartment within the last year. Of those, almost half said they had someone they live with that has a medical condition that could be made worse when exposed to secondhand smoke. Also, most of these people have children or senior citizens in their apartment homes and over 70% do not allow smoking in their home at this point in time. Some said the smoke came from outdoors and some said it came from another unit. Of these, only 10% complained to the person smoking and only 6% complained to management of the building, which means that many of these managers and owners do not know that there's a problem in the building. Why do so few people complain? There is a myth that in, in society that there's some kind of right to smoke. But there is no right to smoke. It is a choice, usually taken in the teenage years when the, the, the decision-making sections of young brains are not fully developed. The tobacco industry would like us to believe that smoking is a legal right, but it is merely a choice, and then it becomes an addiction. Also, the places where people smoke, even in their own apartments, can be regulated because the courts have found that their smoking is not a privacy right. Finally, 80.5% of respondents of, of our survey support restrictions of smoking in multi-unit housing, and a large percentage said that these laws should also apply to existing and new buildings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason Weber, followed by Kimberly Sinclair. Hello, City Council. My name is Jason Weber. Um, I've been living in Glendale for about three years. Uh, in this January, uh, we had some new neighbors move in who smoke heavily. It leaks through our floors and fills up the room that we, our family room where we stay. Um, we, in the middle of the winter, had to open all our windows, and we couldn't use the heat because it would pull the air from the downstairs up into our bedrooms, so we couldn't sleep. So we slept several nights with the windows open and no heat. Um, now it's summer. They smoke outside. We can't open windows at all because the smoke comes in and uh, chokes us. Um, we talked to the management at the apartment, and they said there's nothing they can do because there's no legal uh, restraints at all. Um, we've spent hundreds of dollars on filters. It costs us... It's expensive to buy them, and the filters themselves cost us hundreds of dollars every six months. Um, I just want to point out that it does affect not only outdoors, but people in their own homes. We have nowhere to go. We have nowhere to sleep that we can be free from smoke. And I am just wish to find any way that you can to help us with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kimberly Sinclair, followed by Janice Chow. Hi, good evening. My name is Kimberly Sinclair, and as you know, I teach health and psychology over at Glendale High School, and my students could not be here today because they're 
in the midst of finals, and they're graduating this Thursday. But uh, I wanted to share for, share with you um, some things that happened in my class. Um, I have a petition that's signed here by some of the 18-year-old students that I'm going to present to all of you. And uh, today, this morning, I had one student who said, oh, okay, I'll sign it. And then the other student said, well, why are you going to sign that? And the kid said, the uh, second, first kid turned to the second kid and said, well, smoking is bad for you. Everybody knows that. And then he signed it. And then the kid that hassled him about signing it also signed it. And um, I was talking to my class about uh, Burbank. And the perception from my students is that they that no one can smoke anywhere in Burbank. And I tried to correct that with them and say, no, you know, it's not quite everywhere in Burbank. And they said, oh, no, you can't smoke anywhere in Burbank because my friend got a ticket. And then they were also told me about another time where somebody else they knew got a ticket in the outdoor smoking, uh, in the outdoor uh, dining. And uh, the, lastly, I just want to end with, um, I was talking to my classes about, well, you know, Glendale is thinking about doing something similar to what Burbank did. And one of my freshmen said, oh, my God, they should do that at the Americana. So great minds think alike. So I want to present this to you. So here you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Janice Chow, followed by Anahid Samidian. Good evening, Mayor Draymond and Council Members. My name is Janice Chow with the American Cancer Society. The American Cancer Society applauds your extended effort in taking a bold step forward in protecting the health of Glendale from secondhand smoke. The proven health dangers of secondhand smoke are clear and well known. Secondhand smoke contains over 4,000 known human carcinogens that cause cancer. Can you believe that every year over 3,000 non-smoking adults in the United States will die of lung cancer from breathing the smoke of someone else's cigarettes. Scientific studies from government agencies show the dangers of secondhand smoke are real. The 2006 U.S. Surgeon General's report states that secondhand smoke is a serious health hazard and that there is no risk-free level of exposure. In addition, the California Air Resources Board has identified secondhand smoke as a toxic air contaminant. The simple truth is that tobacco use continues to be the most preventable cause of death. Smoking is, res is responsible for approximately 85% of lung cancer deaths and 30% of cancer-related deaths. Lung cancer alone kills 14,000 Californians each year. <coughs> That's more than prostate, breast, and colon cancer combined. To prevent thousands of tobacco-related cancers and deaths, tobacco use must come down significantly. This is the reason why the American Cancer Society is a leading advocate for the restrictions proposed in your draft ordinance tonight. By retaining, the pro by retaining the proposed ordinance in its current form as much as possible, you will be taking great steps at truly creating a healthier community, making Glendale a desirable place for people to live and patronize. We applaud your strong leadership and dedication in making the health of your community a priority, protecting non-smokers and setting a healthy example for other cities to follow. The American Cancer Society is a nationwide community-based voluntary health organization that's dedicated to eliminating cancer as a major health problem by preventing cancer, saving lives, and diminishing suffering from cancer through research, education, advocacy, and service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Anna Houston. Anahid uh, Panigian, followed by Harvey Pearson. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Drayman, members of the City Council staff, and the guests. My name is Anahid Panigian. I'm here today to support the issue of limitation on smoking, not only in public places, but also the common areas of the residential apartment building. Smoking is the most common cause lung Long-term exposure to the tobacco smoke irritates lung, causing to the disease. The odors of the second smoke, second-hand smoke, cause a nuisance and annoyance to non-smokers when in close proximity to people who are smoking. I believe that Glendale is a great place to live and work. That is up to each of us to keep the city smoke-free air. Glendale 
sorry, I think it is necessary to develop a proposed set of regulation as a new ordinance, which is the best interest of the resident health. It's also in the best interest of community owners. The property owners can provide designated outdoor smoking area. The space should be whatever is in ordinance 20 or 15 feet away from the window and door and as a common area because we have been affected from my neighbors many years as second hand smoke. My concern today is to support this new ordinance. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Harvey Pearson, followed by uh, Igor Egan. Councilman, uh, my name is Harvey Pearson. I officially live in Los Feliz. The last 30 years, half my time has been spent in Glendale. I have a very good friend that lives in an apartment who uh, could be well at risk of secondhand smoke coming from downstairs, just as it did for many, many years in my apartment in, in Los Feliz. And uh, I think there was some statistic, 32% only seem to be that worried about it as non-smokers in apartments, but there could be a logical reason for that in that uh, since most people don't smoke, you have a pretty good chance when you live in an apartment building of not experiencing this terrible secondhand smoke. But if you're one of the unfortunate ones that's located right next to a heavy smoker, or particularly right over a heavy smoker, then you'll understand. Uh, and you can only hope that the non-smokers uh, that don't have that happen can think there but for the grace of God go I. So, what do for now? If, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, Alicia Lopez, followed by Cindy Estepona. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, City staff, and community members. My name is Alicia Lopez, and I am the Chair of the Coalition for Tobacco-Free Los Angeles County, which is comprised of over 70 agencies consisting of various community-based organizations and nonprofit agencies. I wanted to take a moment on behalf of the Coalition to applaud your leadership toward making Glendale a healthier city by considering the expansion of the limitations of smoking in public places in Glendale, including in multi-unit housing, for the agenda tonight. The coalition encourages cities to limit smoking in outdoor public places as there is no safe level of secondhand smoke exposure. Limiting exposure to secondhand smoke outdoors encourages young people not to smoke as they do not see the behavior being modeled and smokers are encouraged to quit because the smoke-free environment changes the social norm around smoking. The coalition also encourages efforts to protect residents from exposure to secondhand smoke where they live and recognizes that tobacco smoke can drift in apartment buildings from other units or from outside. It may enter through plumbing, cabinets, and closets, ceiling fans, fireplaces, ventilation systems, and under doors from hallways. It also may enter through windows and doors from residents smoking on patios, balconies, and in courtyards. In the packet provided to you by SAFE, there is a document developed by the California Environmental Protection Agency, which lists the many illnesses that can be caused by continual exposure to secondhand smoke. The other side of that uh, document shows the percentage of the California population who already suffer from chronic illnesses, which can be made worse by exposure to, to tobacco smoke. People with disabilities account for 12.9% of the population in California, and only 14% of adults still smoke in the state. <coughs> State and federal fair housing laws are supposed to provide that people with disabilities or chronic illnesses such as asthma or heart disease can use and enjoy their rented apartments. However, if there are no non-smoking sections in apartment buildings or non-smoking buildings, adults and children with these kinds of uh, conditions cannot be accommodated. They are forced to move from building to building when a new neighbor moves in who happens to smoke. So again, the Coalition for Tobacco-Free LA County applauds your leadership with this very important public health, health initiative and looks forward to a healthier Glendale for residents and visitors alike. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Estepona followed by Lori Collins. Um, 
I'm Igor Kagan. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We lost you. No I lost you. But you, we found you. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, members of the Housing Authority and Redevelopment Agency. My name is Igor Kagan. I'm with the American Lung Association of California. Smoke-free environments and, and clean, healthy air is a right for everyone. Adults and children with chronic illness like lung disease especially need the opportunity to live in, in uh, non-smoking environments. Non-smoking sections and non-smoking apartment buildings will provide that opportunity. The proposed ordinance before you would require non-smoking sections and also provide legal support to apartment owners who want to make their buildings totally non-smoking. There is no law that prevents landlords from adopting no smoking policies for their buildings, but many hesitate because they, they want that level of security with the law saying that, that they can actually do this. The proposed ordinance will protect tenants and landlords. It is especially important for, the, for prospective tenants to know before they commit to renting an apartment where non-smoking units and smoking permit, permitted units are. Also, they need the security of knowing that no one will move into the adjacent unit and smoke in that unit. The proposed ordinance before you would require that kind of disclosure. Several cities in California have already begun to examine serious health issue of drifting tobacco smoke into multi-unit housing. The cities of Oakland and Albany have ad both adopted ordinances which, re which require the landlord to disclose where smoking and non-smoking units are located. Calabasas, Novato, and Loma Linda have disclosure and also require non-smoking sections. These cities also grandfather existing tenants who smoke. This is done by requiring all tenants who wish to continue to smoke in their units to inform management by a certain date, so the burden of disclosure doesn't fall on management. An even greater number of cities have identified tobacco smoke as a nuisance, including Calabasas, Novato, Loma Linda, Dublin, and Belmont. We urge you to recognize the problem of drifting tobacco smoke in apartment, that drifting tobacco smoke in apartment is a serious health hazard, and we urge you to, to pass the strongest ordinance possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kagan. I apologize for getting past you there. Uh, let's see, Ms. Estefano, followed by Lori Collins. Hello, City Council members. My name is Cindy Estepona. I have been a resident for in Glendale for most of the time since 1978. I am an RN for 32 years, and I'm also a volunteer with the city uh, CERT team. And so I have a real commitment to um, participate in the betterment of the community and to do, try to do something positive in, in improving the neighborhoods. Um, my family has been personally affected by cigarette smoke. When my twin sister and I were born, we went through nicotine withdrawal. That was not a choice. When my sister and I got to the teenage years, she chose to smoke. That was a choice. She now has emphysema and cancer and is in stage. I have never smoked, and I'm thankful for that. My only things that have affected me are asthma, and but when I'm exposed to cigarette smoke, it will come on so suddenly that I have been, I have felt like my life is impending, like, like I'm going to die because I can't. I get into bronchospasms and can't get the air. So this is life-threatening. I feel very, very strongly in the right to choose to smoke and the right to choose not to be exposed to the smoke. I also have taken steps with neighbors to let them know what my health situation is and to respectfully ask them if they could smoke a little ways away from a shared patio where it would drift into my apartment and fill the whole apartment. My husband got the number seven gauge plastic and actually cre created a bubble inside of our living room when the people refused to smoke, stop smoking outside when they knew it was creating severe breathing problems because we believe in trying to leave, live peace with our neighbors so he tried that and it cut down some fortunately at this point 
those neighbors have moved. We had talked with our landlord pleasantly. He said he recommended we go to the police. We went to the police and gave our circumstances, asking for their assistance, and they said there was no way they could help us because there was nothing on the books. So even though I believe strongly in people's choice to smoke or not smoke, I think that looking at these issues and creating some guidelines would be very beneficial and create a much more peaceful environment. Thank you. Uh, Lori Collins, followed by Greg Breyer? Breer? Denier. Okay, but it wasn't in. All right, Denier. Thank you. Ms. Collins. Good evening. My name is Lori Collins, and I'm here to speak on my behalf. I'm also here to speak on behalf of my sister. My sister was one of those 3,000 people who died, who's a non smoker, and she died of lung cancer in February. She left a child eight, and she left a child ten. Um, so I have real first hand experience about the devastating impacts of secondhand smoke. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, there is no risk free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. According to the same report, separating smokers from non smokers, cleaning the air, and ventilating buildings cannot eliminate secondhand smoke exposure. Um, according to the American Lung and Cancer Association, almost 7, 173,000 people are diagnosed with lung cancer every year. And it's a terrible diagnosis because 160,000 people die of lung cancer. You have the power under your police powers to enact this ordinance to protect the health and safety of the citizens of this city. Please do it. Please enact this ordinance. It's in the best interest of us all. Thank you. Um, Greg Guineer, please, followed by Nancy Kent. Good evening, uh, Mayor Drayman and members of the council. My name is Greg Guineer, and I'm a Glendale resident for about 10 years now. Uh, I want to point out a situation that's maybe kind of unique to a lot of people that my family faces. Um, we live on Glenwood Road, adjacent to Hoover High School, and we live right on the corner across the street from Keppel and Toll School. And of course, the schools themselves are already uh, smoke-free environments. But because of our proximity to the school, our yard and the sidewalks in front of our yard become sort of a extension of the school campus, if you will, with a lot of kids waiting there for pickup, a lot of parents waiting there at the end of the day to pick their kids up. And this becomes the de facto smoking area because the people can't smoke at the school. We even have, during the day sometimes, uh, employees of the school and sometimes contractors that are working for the school that since they can't smoke at the school they come over and uh, stand in front of our house and smoke. So uh, we would certainly like to see a ordinance that would address uh, public areas like that because as I understand now we I mean I can ask people not to smoke but it's it's not uh, you know a real comfortable thing to do and uh, so I would certainly encourage uh, passage of this ordinance which I think will uh, will help make Glendale a better place for everyone thank you thank you Mr. Uh, Nancy Kent followed by Erica Halchuk my name is Nancy Kent resident of Glendale I, I do not like breathing secondhand smoke, including outside, and I encourage you to ban smoking wherever you think it's appropriate. Uh, by the way, last Friday I noticed signs outside at the Americana that said it's a no smoking area, and I think they said except in enclosed restaurant patios. Nice, nice little brass signs, very classy. Um, I would like to make a pitch for enforcement. The narrow passageway to Brand from the Orange Street garage that's called the Chess Park is already officially a no smoking area, but the few times I've been there, it is a smoker's lounge. Uh, with that in mind, and also with what the last speaker just said in mind, I would also encourage you to provide some public places where people can smoke. 
Uh, there was a letter to the editor in the news press that suggested enclosed smoking kiosks. <laughs> this is a very strong addiction, and regardless of what people's addictions are, smoking or drinking or going to city council meetings, they will do those addictions. Um, yes, but... With a specific area in mind, if you are willing to make the area east of the central library a no smoking area, I hope that will be strictly enforced. Right now, the conversation pit in front of the library door is another smoker's lounge with many children walking through it. May I suggest a very small smoking kiosk be built in the middle of the lawn that's between the library parking lot and the sidewalk at Harvard and Louise. Uh, smokers will smoke, and, and I think that if you provide a clearly labeled specific place for them to smoke, whether it's enclosed or not, it will make enforcement seem more reasonable. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Uh, Erica Halchak, followed by Stephen Gallegos. My name is Erica Halchek. I'm here on behalf of the American Lung Association. I'm an intern there for the summer. I'm a current master's in public health student at UCLA in the Environmental Health Sciences program. And I just wanted to read you a couple of results from a recent study that came out May 2nd, 2008 by the University of California at San Francisco. According to the study, a 30-minute exposure to the level of secondhand smoke than one might normally inhale in an average bar setting was enough to result in blood vessel injury in young and otherwise healthy lifelong non-smokers. Compounding the injury to the blood vessels themselves, the exposure to smoke impedes the function of the body's natural repair mechanisms that are activated in the face of the blood vessels injury, the researchers report. And many of these effects persisted 24 hours later. These results showed that brief exposure to real-world levels of passive smoke have strong and persistent consequences on the body's vascular system, and this is concluded by the researchers. So this shows that there is no safe level of secondhand smoke, and considering that many people don't eat in a 30-minute time period, this applies to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephen Gallegos, followed by Margaret Hammond. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Draymond, members of the Glendale City Council. My name is Stephen Gallegos. I am a resident of Glendale and uh, was born here. So I'm uh, very proud of my city and uh, that this is a huge step forward um, for public health, not just it for residents of Glendale, not just for residents of Southern California or Los Angeles County, but for the people who yearn to breathe free around this country and around the world. Um, yes, absolutely, you know, the secondhand smoke is bad inside, but it's also bad outside unless you're sitting in a wind tunnel that uh, your napkin's been tied to and that you are in a seat belt. Uh, nearby outdoor smokers pollute lungs outdoors as much as they do indoors. Um, as you know, it contains over 4,000 chemicals and that uh, people that puff through a filter um, uh, get pure stuff. Um, that contains twice as much tar and nicotine. Uh, secondhand smoke kills uh, over 53,000 in the United States and approximately 4,700 in California. Uh, the cost to California taxpayers from illnesses caused from tobacco use is around $6 billion annually. Since we have a third of the population in Los Angeles County, you would probably imagine that would be two billion in LA County, and we are the third largest city in that in this county. Um, Dr. William Ferroni, former director of applied research for Philip Morris Incorporated, stated that dangerous chemicals from cigarette smoke can linger in the air, indoors or outdoors, for up to six hours after a cigarette has been extinguished. A 2007 Stanford University study states if you are at a sidewalk cafe, as we have many here in Glendale, and you sit within 18 inches of a person who smokes two cigarettes over the course of an hour, which is not 
uh, unlikely to happen here in Glendale, your exposure to secondhand smoke could be the same as if you sat one hour inside a tavern filled with smokers. Um, secondhand smoke steals the clean air that's meant for everyone to breathe. Secondhand smoke steals the future of futures of our children who are exposed to it. Secondhand smoke steals the lives of babies sleeping in cribs. Nicotine addiction is what smoking is. And that addiction is lighting up a cigarette in the presence of other people with no regard for their safety. Nicotine addiction is assuming one has the right to grow, manufacture, and um, sell tobacco in spite of the fact that it kills people. And addiction is assuming one has the right to break federal, state, and local laws without paying the consequences. Uh, we are the people who are here to speak in, up in defending our right to breathe clean, healthy air. The city of Los Angeles has just, in, um, Councilman Smith has just introduced, introduced a motion to ban smoking in outdoor dining areas, and I made copies for the members of the council and staff. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gagas. Uh, Margaret Hammond, followed by Marilyn Gunnell. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and staff. My name is Margaret Hammond, private citizen, uh, speaking my piece of living in Glendale for 50 years. Uh, one of my best friends at this moment is waiting to go in for surgery. She never smoked a cigarette in her life. Last year, she lost part of her uh, lungs, and this week, she's not sure how much more is going to be she's going to lose. She has a 94-year-old mother that she cares for. Um, and uh, as you know, I lost my mother, my husband, and recently my brother, all to smoking. Directly, uh, on their death certificate, there was contributing uh, factors, was smoking. My husband was told one week before he died, quit or you'll die. There you are. If it is an addict, what is it? Um, you know, I remember when uh, we used to go dancing at the Palladium and being burned by people with cigarettes in their hand, my being burned on my arm, my dress being burned, and the place being full of smoke. I'm sure there's a lot of us suffer from those days. Uh, I've had my uh, property nearly burned up with smokers, and I feel very strongly and messed up with smoking. I do not allow smoking in my apartments. That is one of the rules that uh, when I... Uh, they signed the lease in huge letters across the top, no smoking. And that's it. And my tenants are very happy. They, they really are they're tickled to death to rent. I can rent immediately because there's no smoking in my apartments. And, I'm, you know, the passing of this ordinance will only improve the quality of life in Glendale. And isn't that what we're, you know, we really want is to have our quality uh, you know, uh, of life improved. You know, where is our haven at night to go home to from everyday pressures? We can't wait to get home. And then, and then, our haven is full of secondhand smoke. I myself am very sensitive to it. As I've gotten older, it's worse. My eyes <laughs> run continually when I'm anywhere near a smoker and my breathing becomes, I have problems I've had to go and have, uh, go to the doctor about. I just can't be around it. So that is affecting my quality of life and my enjoyment of life here in Glendale. And I don't think that's fair. I've put in my dues living here and being a part of Glendale and paying my taxes and, uh, you know, just supporting Glendale. So I feel that I deserve to have my quality of life protected, and this ordinance would help to do that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marilyn Gunnell, followed by Susan Jacaro. Good evening. I would like to um, make a comment tonight. Uh, first of all, I've been keeping track, and there has only been one person in a health professional, of all people, to uh, say that you should vote down this ordinance. I say that you should vote it up. My husband, who is an oncologist, says, yes, vote it up. And the people I talk to in daily living say, oh, how wonderful. Glendale is going to be a leader, just like we have been with other issues. And we are going to vote yes on this ordinance. It's crucial. I was at a meeting at the uh, Mexican restaurant outside at the Americana about a week ago. 
and it was lovely and it was warm and it was beautiful and then stench came to our table and everyone was looking from their tables where is the stench coming from it was coming from a balcony on one of the condos or apartments I don't know which it was that was above and slightly to my left as I was sitting at my table and stench from a cigar was infiltrating into our meeting. This cannot be allowed to continue. This is disgusting, gross and disgusting. My son-in-law is very saddened by the fact that his mother died a grisly death of lung cancer and never got to meet her now two and three year old grandsons because she always told Frank don't worry Frank my smoking doesn't bother anyone to mom it bothers me it bothers me that you are smoking and then on her deathbed she said Frank you were right it bothered everyone and he said yes and now look what is happening to our family so it is critical and don't think that I was not a smoker because when I was in nursing school in uh, 1959 and then through to 1965 I smoked I didn't smoke a lot but I did smoke and that was what many doctors and nurses under high stress did in those days but now most of them have smartened up the way that you will help us to smarten up here in Glendale and they are not smoking anymore and uh, my husband got me to quit before we married in 1965 most of us who smoked in that time wish we hadn't but we can't go backwards in time but the lucky ones didn't smoke a lot and stopped please follow your hearts and your hearts and your lungs will take us to voting yes on this ordinance and getting smoking out of Glendale thank you thank you Susan to Carl please followed by Noelle Millian um. Hi guys, <laughs> I just wanted to say really quickly that I'm a mom of two, Glendale Name for the record, please. Oh, Susan Jacarl, sorry. Um, uh, mom of two, and I agree with everyone that's been speaking up here. Smoking is vile, it's evil. We live in an apartment, and our next door neighbor, I don't know how he does it, but chain smokes in the shower. So you can imagine when he's like <laughs> outside. So please, Jeez. please, please pass this ban to, the, um, pass the ordinance to ban public smoking. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Amy, Amy, Amy Clem, uh, followed by Ann Nord, please. Ginger Sam. Yeah, I may have. Noel Millian. Oh, Noel Millian. Yeah. Sorry. Then Amy Clem. Why don't you why don't you come on up and and we'll we'll let Amy Clem sit in the on deck circle here. Probably <laughs> still have my nerve to do. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I wasn't quite prepared for this this evening. Uh, my name is Noelle Million. I'm a resident of the northwest part of Glendale. I've been a resident of Glendale for 30 plus years. Um, it's a place that I've loved. I loved growing up here. I chose to buy a house here and raise my family here. Um, but one of the things I don't like that we're subjected to is secondhand smoke. Um, I can't go into a coffee shop without my dragging my two children behind me. I can't go into a department store without making a beeline for the door. Um, I have to say, on a personal level, um, excuse me, nervous. Um, on a personal level, my son, six years old, suffers from asthma, and because of that, I can't eat in an outdoor restaurant. Excuse me. I can't eat at a cafe outside for fear of somebody smoking next to us because he might have uh, an asthma attack. Unfortunately, um, I know that people have the right to smoke, but I also have the right to be in a public setting without fear of my, ha my son having an asthma attack. Um, I would really love to enjoy the outdoor settings more with my children and not have to pick them up and take off running because someone is having a cigarette outside. Um, it would really make me happy to be 
I'm, I'm very happy a part of, to be a part of this community, but it would make me really proud to be a part of this community to know that Glendale would be um, taking a step forward and being a model city just like Santa Monica has done, just like Burbank has done, and make a stand and acknowledge the fact that we all know secondhand smoke is a great health hazard um, to adults and to young, to young children. Anyway, thank you. Uh, how bad was it now that you got through? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I to drink a bottle of water. <laughs> the, the council hasn't devoured anyone so far tonight, but the, evening, but the evening is young. So, Okay, uh, Amy Clem, followed by Ann Nord. Good evening, Mayor Tramian, City Council, and staff. My name is Amy Clem, and I'm a Glendale resident. Um, I'm not going to give you an earful about how dangerous secondhand smoke is or quote a lot of statistics and data to support it. You've heard it all before, read it, studied it, and it's my belief that you all know it. What I'm here to say tonight is that I'm proud you've taken this step, historic step. We're all here tonight, both for and against, because you saw the need to change something in our city. Now here we are hashing out what something will ultimately be. I would love to see the draft we have before us as it is and in its entirety become the ordinance you adopt. I encourage it and hope all of you see the overwhelming long-term benefits <coughs> such an action will have on all of us. I'd like to remind you that we are asking each of you to do what you think is best for us, the citizens of Glendale. I think you know what best is, but I'm a little worried that big money and a few naysayers will sway you to compromise. You know it's illegal to sell alcohol, pornography, and cigarettes to minors. It's also illegal to give alcohol, pornography, and cigarettes to minors. If you show a minor an X-rated film, at minimum you can face charges of corrupting a minor. But if you blow cigarette smoke into a minor's face, make them live with it in their home, in your car, or while eating at a restaurant, you get nothing, not even a ticket. That needs to change. Adults can act on their own behalf, but our children need us to protect them. Passing this ordinance will be a step in the right direction, and I strongly urge you to do to think of all your children or yourself as a child when you vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ann Nord, followed by Valerie Gardner. My name is Ann Nord. I'm as, n as nervous as I was. Um, I've been a resident of Glendale for eight years and have fell fallen in love with this community, um, with the people and um, everything that it stands for. Um, I've also been a pediatric hematology oncology nurse for 18 years and I've seen firsthand the effects of smoking and secondhand smoke has on children. I've also done adult oncology, so I've seen what it does to adults. Um, and I'm also the mother of two. And I just came tonight because I wanted to show my support um, in banning smoking in Glendale. I would love to be able to walk with my children, sit at an outdoor restaurant, enjoy beautiful weather, sit in an outdoor cafe and not have to worry that I am surrounded or engulfed by cigarette smoking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our last speaker is Valerie Gardner. Hi there. Good evening. My name is Valerie Gardner. I am also a Glendale resident, and I'm here in support of this ordinance to ban smoking in public places here in Glendale. Uh, I also love living here, and um, one of the things that I don't like about Glendale is that people can currently smoke in public areas. And I have two children. Um, I also can't take them to eat on a patio in a patio setting. Or um, there have been many times when I've taken my daughter to ballet class, and the door has been open, and there's a smoker right there on the sidewalk. I mean, you know, common sense would have done smokers a lot of good. But unfortunately, uh, you know, my children's lungs need protecting, as well as mine. I have asthma, and cigarette smoke um, will uh, trigger my asthma. And so I feel that it is your duty uh, as our officials to protect us citizens from secondhand smoke. So I am here to plead that to you. So um, currently, my children's lungs are pink, and I'd like to keep them that way. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, that was our last speaker. Um, I'd like to go now to the council, and let's start on this end with Mr. Weaver. Okay, well, I guess I'm the one that started this, so I'll start with my comments first. I'll tie a couple of these things in. 
uh, because of something I'll say in a minute. But here's the city views that went out in the inside page. Council to evaluate possible smoking restrictions. It's just one of many ways we notified the public that we were going to talk about this item tonight. So far, by my count, the vote was 25 to 1 uh, for this projected ordinance. Secondly, I'd like to refresh people's mind that the Constitution and the first ten amendments known as the Bill of Rights uh, gave in there the right to bear arms. That's the only specific one called out in the Constitution. Um, I want to, um, I got these things in order, so I want to make sure I got them right. There's some other th things that were said, studies. Um, it says middle age, this was a study that was done. Uh, ages, pa participants 35 to 55, done over 17 years. Middle aged adults who smoke tend to perform poorly on tests of memory and reasoning compared to non smokers. Smoking was associated with mental decline in middle age. That's one article I read. Beijing introduces anti-smoking rules for the Olympics. Smoke-free Olympics. Hotels and restaurants for the first time cannot have any smoking. Physical uh, fitness centers, offices, meeting rooms, toilets, and lifts in buildings must be completely smoke-free within a few days of this issuance. Uh, Chinese capital have hired 100,000 inspectors to enforce the ban. We'll never be able to do that here. But, <laughs> but boy, they're, they're positive thinking there. Uh, the Olympic venues are under stringent smoking bans. And China has about 350 million smokers. One third of the world's smokers all live in China. About one million people die of smoking-related diseases each year in China. Now I'd like to read um, a couple pros that I got, because we get emails, believe me. You got a lot. I just picked a few. One person participated in the uh, Great American Cleanup and she walked from Wilson uh, on uh, Wilson from Glendale Avenue to Harvey Drive and they entered the Wilson Mini Park and they talked about the abundance of cigarette butts in the park. The majority were found around the picnic tables despite the fact there was no cigarette it, despite the fact there was an ashtray next to each table. The other place where there was a tremendous number of cigarette butts was found in the play area itself, in the wood chips. Another writer, talking about Kenneth Village. Smoking has become very prevalent. There's a new toy store, and the owner, when it is time to smoke, comes out on the sidewalk in front of the stores and smokes. A small coffee house cafe recently sold, and smokers now gather at the outdoor tables. This is the same for the pastry shop on the other side of the street. And a few minutes ago, this woman left the yoga studio and spelled cigarette smoke coming from the auto repair shop. She says people are gathering in various spots along the small stretch to stand, talk, and smoke. And that's turning people off in Kenneth Village. Up in the area where I live in Lower Show Canyon Park, woman writes, there are cigarette butts everywhere even the kids play areas what mother likes to grab a cigarette butt out of her child's hand or mouth another one in Windsor Mini Park where it was prohibited to smoke we made a mistake and we started allowing smoking uh, she says about the young men that are going out in the street and smoking around the cars and they're getting smoke all over those were some around town that support this ordinance. And then there's a few that are against. One writes, it's an attack on individual rights. I think I just said the Constitution 
doesn't protect individual rights on smoking. Another one, this is a real good one. Well, once again, the city council's gone too far. I read the article on Saturday's paper and could not believe my eyes. What gives you the right to vote to skip initial public input into what you are proposing? Well, it was in city views and listed all over the place that we're doing this tonight. I remember reading the promise months ago that the public would be involved and allow us to have input into this ridiculous ban that has gone way too far. One tonight. Why not let the people of Glendale vote on this matter? Are you scared of the outcome? Great. Now you want to take away the rights of individuals. There it is again. And just about everyone I got talked about their rights. It says like, it sounds like we are becoming a communist country. <laughs> I thought that was a corker to end it with. Um, now, my next one. My father, I told this story before. In the 1930s, 20s and 30s, my father was a chain smoker. When I was a baby, he had a heart attack. The doctors told him if he did not stop immediately, he would be dead in six months. He lived 18 years. I got to see him grow up. And when I was 19, another heart attack took him. He was on glycerin, nitroglycerin pills all those 18 years. He had pain constantly. That was before such thing as bypass surgery, or heart, anything to do with the heart. And I told the story of going to Rams games, Raider games at the Coliseum, confined to my seat, and we always sat in the top row, and the strong drifts of cigarettes and marijuana drifting up right into my face, that of my wife and my kids, week after week. And we'd sit there trying to fan the smoke and the marijuana away from us. There were no regulations at that time. I received, and I couldn't find the, the email I got some time ago, some person in Glendale was very upset that we were going to insti consider instituting a smoking ban here. It says it's, it's just downright insulting. The people in Burbank are forced to come over to Glendale to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, really? So I don't know where they'll go because LA is going to start into it and every other city is. I thought that was pretty comical. Uh, and when you see a smoker, most smokers, what do they do? Take the whip and they put the cigarette over here. Not in front of them. They put it over here so the smoke will go that away. And where do they blow? Straight ahead so it goes that away. They really care about you. If they did, they would keep it here and they would swallow the smoke. They're not going to do that. Here and here. Um, We've already heard about the secondhand smoke statistics. The evidence is overwhelming on this. The mayor of Kana, Crusoe, had told me that he does not lease or sell condos or apartments there to any smoker. Totally non-smoking. So if that is occurring there, uh, we've got to pin down where it's coming from because uh, Rick Crusoe will take care of it. The only thing that I don't agree with him on uh, he, he agreed with the smoking ordinance except uh, one of the two things is outdoor patios of restaurants which are controlled by the tenant that choose to permit smoking subject state regulations and any other local limitations city council might um, might develop so as far as I'm concerned there will be no smoking outside anywhere when we get done um, there was only two things that I questioned in the ordinance, and I think I have my questions answered by Mr. Engel. Calabasas passed an ordinance similar, restrictive, and in apartments they said 80 percent, not 85 that we're talking about. And as Mr. Engel, I think he said the county health department uh, statistics or whatever said about 85 percent. Is that right, Mr. Engel? Just yes or no? Is that the county health? Yeah, the 15% uh, Councilman Weaver is the incidence of smoking among adults 
because kids aren't supposed to be smoking, the incidence among adults in Los Angeles County. So that's where the 85% came from. So I can buy that. The second thing Calabas has said, four years to implement in apartments. And we said, as initially, being very draconian, two years to implement. Now, I don't know the implications because I asked, I, I knew from past studies that the turnover in single-family residence on the average is five, five, six years. I asked Mr. Rango if there were any statistics on the turnover in apartments. Some people live in apartments 20, 30 years. Others live six months. But if you want to look at an overall average, it falls in the same area, five to six years. So if you want to give on anything, because I support this entire ordinance, phase it in over, instead of two, could be four. I prefer two, but I don't know the impact that makes on landlords and everything trying to do what this ordinance instructs. My preference would be the two years. Um, the proposed ordinance does clearly state that areas can be designated for smoking by the city manager. Uh, areas like the courtyard of the Alex Theater, you could not smoke there under this ordinance. But an area could be designated outside the courtyard, maybe in the back where, alongside the Alex, where there would be a zone where it could be stated smoking per, um, permitted. Areas like that. But it's, and you could do it in your single family resident. But we've talked about if we're going to put in apartments, you're going to have to separate smoking and the no smoking zones. And from what I heard tonight, when they talk about the horizontal, I mean the vertical placement, now I'm convinced you're going to have to put the smokers on the top floor. Because you put them on the ground, the smoke is just coming up with the non smoker and the floor is above. So that I would want to see that smoking floor has to be above or in a separate building far away. Um, and the last thing, uh, the public, if they want to have something to say about it, uh, uh, motions tonight are to give direction to staff. That means that staff will take what we say, we'll come back with a draft ordinance, another public venue for all those that insist on smoking and killing themselves can come in and speak if they wish. Once that is hearing, it'll come back two weeks later, I think it is, for approval of the ordinance, and they will have a chance to speak again. So the public is not <coughs> being denied the right to speak on this ordinance. I think it's long overdue. I have a grandchild, and I want her to grow up in a smoke-free environment. So I fully support it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Weaver. Um, uh, let me go to Laura Parazian, if you have any comments. Yes. Uh, I wish not only Glendale, but uh, every small and large city in the United States adopt this ordinance. I think it's proven fact that the um, smoking is a health hazard. So we need to do everything everything we could do to, st uh, to stop smoking in uh, public areas, in apartment buildings, in every place that uh, mostly that there are gatherings of people. So I, I support this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Quintero. Okay, I agree with the majority of the uh, provisions in the uh, ordinance. And like Ms. Parazzi and I agree, as a nation, we've got to do something to try to, at the bare minimum, even if you don't think of the humanity of it, just to try to cut down on the billions of dollars that are spent uh, because of uh, the illnesses associated with uh, smoking. So I'd like to enact most of the provisions. However, there are some that I think are going to be too difficult to implement, and that includes the 85 percent uh, rule and the stacking and clustering in one area of a uh, apartment building. I, uh, there's enough pressure on renters at this point in terms of uh, rents and so forth, so that's going to be difficult for me to go there at this point. 
Uh, however, smoking prohibited in common areas of apartment buildings, I think that's something that's easily uh, to do and, uh, and enforce. And um, then in terms of parks and other recreation facilities, I think we can uh, ban smoking. Um, and we could always come up with a small smoking uh, area somewhere within a park so people can physically go there and smoke a cigarette and then get back to uh, to the rest of their uh, activities. And as Bur well, Burbank's already adopted, but as Pasadena adopts their uh, ordinance, ordinance, we can begin to uh, monitor what they're doing, how they're enforcing it, and and maybe move uh, to a little stronger uh, position. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Quintero. Mr. Majarin. Um, thank you. I'm strongly against smoking. I've experienced everything that the speakers have. Uh, I have a child uh, who has asthma, who gets uh, triggered when he has uh, cigarette smoke in the vicinity. Um, I, I think we have to take uh, reasonable steps, though, towards implementing these, these provisions. I'm afraid that if we do the entire package as presented, it's going to be something that's just going to be uh, uncontrollable and unenforceable uh, by our police department. Um, but, I mean, I'm ready to to go for uh, many, many of these provisions. I think that the uh, smoking on all public property uh, should be uh, prohibited. I like the idea of the city manager or the council designating uh, smoking areas, and I like the kiosk, maybe the old-style gazebo, prefab gazebo, set it up in a corner away from uh, away from uh, everything else, and that's the only place uh, that smoking would be uh, permitted. Uh, I'm in favor of prohibiting smoking in the common areas of the apartment buildings. I think once we start getting into the smoking within the actual units, uh, that's very difficult. I think that's just a, a tough one to tough one to enforce. You are going to have neighbors, you know, calling. I mean, imagine the call. Uh, you know, I'm. I think my neighbor's smoking, and would we expect a police officer to to come and knock on their door? If we wouldn't, you know, and they have a lot of other things going on in this city, and if they aren't going to respond to that call and knock on that person's door, then the, the ordinance prohibiting smoking in the apartment unit has no teeth. Um, clearly the landlords are in, a, I think, a much better position to declare, uh, voluntarily declare uh, areas of their building or their entire building as no smoking. And if there's a violation, there's an eviction. Uh, they're clearly entitled to do an eviction. Um, the ordinance is set up, I think, with enough uh, leeway that there must be a warning issued first. So the crime, the infraction is uh, continuing. The crime is the failure to stop smoking after receiving a warning. Um, you know, we get to the outdoor restaurants and the patios. I need to... I need to think about that. I think maybe at least we should have certain areas uh, designated for smoking only in the outside, that there be, be non-smoking portions of the, uh, of, the, of the patios. We're dealing, with, we're dealing with people who are sick. We're dealing with people who are addicted. And, and I don't say that lightly, and I don't think we should uh, underestimate what an addiction is. Addiction is a psychological and a physiological need for a drug. And this is what they have. And all the rules in the world about not smoking here and not smoking there are going to have little effect on people who have the psychological craving for the, for the cigarette. Um, that being said, these rules are to protect the non-smokers. However, I think we, we have to be realistic in how far we can change the behavior of those people that, that do smoke. 
Um, I'm ready to push this further uh, at a later point, but I think this is uh, the areas that I've talked about, and I think Mr. Quintero was uh, pretty close to, to a lot of them, uh, is a good series of strong steps, uh, which will ultimately, hopefully, uh, will result in a revisiting it where we will be able to uh, change behavior such that no one is smoking at all on the streets, on the sidewalks. Also, Ms. Uh, Ms. Clem talked about uh, smoking in a car. It is, a, it is currently a, against the law to smoke in a car with uh, a child under 18. Uh, that currently is, is a law. Um, so that's where I'm at. Um, I know that there's a vast, uh, vast support in the council chambers this evening uh, supporting this ordinance. I can assure you folks there is a, uh, a sleeping giant, a smoking giant out there uh, that hasn't been prodded and and when cornered there's just going to be mayhem I think. Uh, there's going to be huge, huge opposition to this. Uh, they don't know it yet but I think when the word gets out uh, we'll start to see some more action. That's why I think we need to do an ordinance that's workable, uh, something that uh, something that protects our air uh, but gives some outlet uh, for the smokers to do what they have to do but, but limit the infiltration of that smoke to all of us. Thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you, Mr. Najarian. Mr. Yusefian. When he said smoking giant, that, that jolly green giant's thing came out to me, except it's in gray. <laughs> says, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, I'm smoking. Uh, let me tell you a couple of things. Um, how many of you smoke today? Raise your hand. <laughs> Guess what? Every one of us smoked today three cigarettes. We smoked equivalent to three cigarettes. Every single person who lives in L.A. County smokes, whether you like it or not. We don't call it cigarettes, we call it smog. That's the problem with a lot of our emphysemas. That's the problem with what you're facing. I have smoked one cigarette when I was 18, and I didn't even finish it. You know what? I have lungs issues. Not because I'm around anybody who smokes. My parents don't smoke. My friends don't smoke live in a house, lived in a condo, lived in an apartment, never came around the smoke. Not the issue of the secondhand smoke. It's I live in L.A. So you don't want to have any problems with your lungs? Leave L.A. I'll be very honest with you. I drove to Northern California. You know what? Beautiful, clean air. My lungs were shocked how clean it was. <clears throat> So this ordinance is not going to solve all your perils. This ordinance is not going to save one life. This ordinance is not going to keep anybody's heart attacks down. Any children are going to be raised and they're going to be pure and there's not going to be any problem. It's not going to do any of that stuff. So should we adopt an ordinance? I think we should. We've got to start somewhere. You start somewhere. Let me tell you, for all you people who sit there on the sidewalk cafes and eat, and you have a problem with the smoker, guess what your smoke problem, your problem is? Is all those cars driving by. They're putting out more PMs than the guy who's smoking behind you. You just don't know it. The reason we have more asthma problems in the last few years, as the uh, one defecto person said, is because according to Southern California Association of Government, the air quality in the Southern California basin has gone down the tube in the last four years. We were making good progress, but guess what? Detroit is making all those big cars, and they're puffing up more smog into the air. More population, more cars. That's your number one problem. All those diesel trucks, that's your other problem. 
all those planes that we all fly all over, that attributes us also. So it's not just one thing. Now on the issue of smoking, I always thought that we should just ban. It's very simple to me. I don't need a rocket science. I don't need to anybody in here tell me smoking is good or bad. I already know that. I did my research a long time ago, 30 years ago. I was involved in a TV show called Feminine Mistake, a program called Medics with Mario Machado. I was one of those people who we did the program called Feminine Mistake, and it won an Emmy. It has to do with females smoking. And believe it or not, female body is more susceptible to damage than male is. We're not all the same. And to an extent, you know what? There are some people who smoke all their lives. Not one problem. In this study, this woman started smoking when she was 42 years old. By the time she was 43, she died of lung cancer. One year. That's all it took. So, we're not all the same. I think... We started this council, at least three of us in here were in the council, when we went out and started moving down the path of banning smoking in the children play area. I think we need to go further now. I am willing and I will vote for a ban in all public facilities. That's all the libraries, all the parks, not just little corner of the park, the whole park. All of those public facilities that we have, I think we can easily, that includes this building, outside of this building, and including the 2,000 workers in this city, and there are some that smoke. They're not going to be happy, including people in our own offices that walk outside. They will not be able to do that anymore. But I think we should do that. That's a good start. I have an issue with the apartments, because I think that's a major nightmare in making. So you go there and you say, okay, 15% of this building is smoke. You know, you could smoke there. You have a building here. You have a person on this apartment. He's allowed to smoke. You have a building right next to it. It happens that in that building, there are non-smokers all here and the smokers over here. What happens when this person smokes and opens the window and the non-smoker smells? Did that person violate the law? Is there a problem? Did it actually create a problem? How do you do this? I don't think there's enough evidence out there of how different cities are dealing with this and it has been adopted long enough for us to know it has been adopted and debugged. So while I'm not saying no to it, I'm saying I will reserve my judgment on that particular thing. I'm not as confident and, uh, for that purpose. Kiosks, see, maybe we should buy all those old telephone boots and put them in one corner. You kind of go inside and we'll put a little fan on top with a filter in it so you smoke in there and the air cleans out. So because, you, you know, in, in reality, it's in a kiosk, you're outside, you're still polluting the air. So, uh, you know, if you go to a park, you're going to be there for maybe two hours, three hours. If you can't stop smoking for three hours, you got major problems. You have really major problems. So I'm not into major kiosks, maybe in some of the areas where the people work, but I don't see it in the parks. Uh, but that's what I feel comfortable in. I think the rest of this stuff, I would like to have the staff go back and work on some of the languages, try to figure out how these things are going to work, how we're going to implement it, how much is it going to take to enforce it. Let's not forget, we're not China, okay? We're not a communistic country, and we can't afford how many people? 100,000? A million a year. No, no, no. How many thousand they hired? 100,000. 100,000. Oh, we can't afford that, guys. We can barely afford the 2,000 people that are working for us. We can't even afford that. So can't afford 100,000 people to watch 200,000. So I need to know what the cost ramifications of this is. 
Who's going to enforce it? Is it going to be the police? Is it going to be the neighborhood services? How do you do this? Uh, so there's more that I need to have. But as I said, I'm very comfortable with doing this with parks and uh, also uh, all the city facilities. And one question I will ask our city attorney, would the Americana fall under the park category? The open space would. There's also a companion part of this report to address the Americana separately if you do not move forward with the ordinance. Okay. I'll, I'll ordinance tell you why I think Americana is different. When you have a half a million people go to one location that is so confined every weekend, I would say that is considered to be an area that I would like to <coughs> enforce this law because there's a lot of people out there. I also was on Frida's, and I was sitting there, and somebody was just walking by and smoking. So, uh, you know, I, it, it doesn't destroy my experience, but nevertheless, uh, I, I think uh, the speaker had a uh, case on that. Uh, I also don't know, did we, did we pass anything with the uh, DDA that said Mr. Caruso could not sell any apartments to people who are smokers? Oh, it was his decision. It was, it was his decision? It's his decision. He doesn't want smoking. It's not in the DDA? Let's get an answer. Mr. It is, it is not included in the DDA. Uh, when I spoke to Crusoe Affiliate, they said it was their intention to have a smoke-free property. Uh, they were not sure how they would enforce it once the, once the unit was sold, uh, but for the residential units, they were going to be smoke-free and within their common areas, smoke-free. So he can control the rental part because control the is. rental part. But I don't think he can control the condos. He certainly can yes, if it's can. part of the CCNRs. Part of the CCNRs. And he owns okay. them. Okay. And is it included it's in the CCNR? That I don't know. That I don't know. Could you please find out? Find out. Okay. He said it wouldn't be. All right. That's, that's Mr. Yusefian has the floor. I'm done. Okay. He had the floor, <laughs> and he gave it back. Uh, Mr. Mincy. You're talking about television shows. There's a current one on cable called Mad Men that takes place in the last in the late sixties, early seventies, where everyone is smoking. And I remember that, but you forget about it till you see it. And I talked to the actors about it, uh, on how they're reacting, because some of them are non smokers. They're almost becoming smokers because they're in this mm -hmm. all of the time. But I remember flying back and forth to New York during that time, and you young people wouldn't believe it, but they actually gave you, a, they fed you on the airplane. Remember that? But they also gave you free cigarettes. Everyone got a free pack of cigarettes on your tray. That was just part of the, part of the deal in those days. We have come a long way, but we also have a lot of immigrant people, particularly from Europe and from Asia, who all seem to smoke. Everybody you talk to, they all seem to smoke. So it takes a while to get the healthy, uh, you know, to get people, get the message here. I'm astounded that there were only one negative vote uh, that came up here tonight. But uh, I certainly support the ordinance. I do think it's going to be a problem in the apartments. Um, it certainly will be up to the apartment manager. Now, I live in an apartment. I'm on the second floor, and the lady below me does not want her husband smoking in the house, so he stands in the doorway with a cigarette out the door, <laughs> and that comes right into my room. <laughs> uh, and that's very common. I've seen others like that, too. You see them in the doorway smoking. And uh, so it's going to take some uh, education to, uh, but it, it's not going to be enforced by the police. It's going to be enforced by the apartment managers, I would say, in the, in the whole. Um, I do believe in personal freedom, but when it affects other people, then that's that's a different thing. And particularly when it when it uh, involves uh, such as asthma and other other items such as that. But I do support it by. It's going to be a tough haul to just, boom, have everything approved immediately without a great uh, several years, perhaps, of, of getting it uh, put in force. 
I'm kind of keeping score here, by the way. I hope I know staff is as well, but I'm just trying to keep score, Mr. Mincy. So just so I understand, you are all right with the ordinance as is or the proposal as is, but perhaps some questions about the phase in time. Right. That's correct. Mr. Weaver, you told me you have something you want to add. Yeah, I just want to comment about the enforcement. Littering is against the law. Please try to enforce. You have to be caught in the act. We have Glendale Cleanup Day to clean up the litter that people leave. And cigarette butts. Heck, L.A. River was my project for some 10 years, and I walked every foot of the L.A. River from the mouth uh, to up in Sepulveda, above Sepulveda Dam to the west end of San Fernando Valley. And guess what was the most prevalent thing in that river? Cigarette butts. We are now required to pick up all those cigarette butts. That's a law that the city must deal with. Uh, speeding is illegal. Do we get every speeder? You watch them go by 80, 90. Don't catch them all. Uh, carpool lane violations. That's illegal. Do we catch them all? No. Turn it, making right-hand turns on a red light without even hesitating. Against the law? Yes. Do we catch them all? No. Smoking in an apartment? Are we going to catch them all? No. There is no law on this earth that is going to be totally enforceable. Whether you, you have a right to kill, you have a right to bear arms, come on, get realistic. Every law made is made for a reason, but every every lawbreaker is, is caught. There's just not enough police to go around. So it's a lame excuse to me. It's interesting if you made the count here. I don't know what the mayor's going to do yet. But right now, it would be at least 3-3. Three, three, with the two housing authority people apparently agreeing to the ordinance as it is. Unfortunately, when it comes time to vote, the agency is going to vote, and the council's going to vote. From what I'm hearing, I greatly sympathize for everybody that lives in an apartment. Because you're not going to get what you need. Only the other groups are. And that's that. So may I make one other? Yes, Mr. Mincy. Um, when you put one area non-smoking, one area smoking, and it's still a small area, <laughs> everybody's in the smoke. I know uh, when airliners in first class, there were four rows, and two rows were non-smoking, two rows were smoking. It didn't make any difference at all. And then the railroads had a car. They'd have a smoking car. And then all the, you'd look, you couldn't even see in there. The the smoke was so thick. But there were little kids in there, too, see, having to be with their parents. Now the trains are completely smoke-free. But uh, when you consider where non-smoking is going to be versus smoking, you have to consider that, too, as far as the space. The ordinance. Okay, well... <clears throat> Mr. Weaver, I think your math is probably right. Uh, in that, Happy for that. In that uh, you've got a, a split deal here probably between the council and the agency. But at any rate, I I don't support the – I'll just cut to the chase. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't support the ordinance as is. I do support some movement forward. Um, um, Although an interesting concept came up here tonight of some sort of a kiosk or a nicotine bubble, and I'm just the image of a big plastic ball with uh, smokers in it rolling themselves around in public areas and parks, uh, chasing their kids with a frisbee. I don't know. It's just a very strange uh, look. There's Grandma in the bubble over there, in the nicotine bubble. Uh, wave at Grandma. Um, oh, she can't see you through the smoke. Never mind. I can't see. Um, all right. Um, I do support a extension of our ban, city's ban, on city-owned facilities, parks, public spaces, um, and that would include uh, the areas that are at, that we can affect with regard to Americana. Um, I uh, where am I? I'm sorry, folks. My notes here. Um, I uh, 
I don't, where I don't support this is the uh, issue of apartments and condos. I do support it for common areas and apartments and condos, uh, common areas, walkways, um, and, uh, and balconies. The things that are typically considered common area in a condo, I would also apply to uh, an apartment. Where I don't support the, uh, the issue at this time, and uh, like some of my colleagues, I would consider it in the future, or as we go along, if there's more info that might change my mind, um, the idea of the 85% rule and the idea of, um, of how you cluster units together, I think that is an extremely difficult thing to do. Um, and I think that it is going to put a tremendous amount of uh, uh, hardship out there. Um, let me see. Where I part from, uh, part with some of my colleagues, or perhaps side with others, is uh, something that I've been wrestling with all day in my mind, and I, um, and that is the issue of uh, restaurants, outdoor restaurants, and sidewalks. Um, where I, I'm not exactly clear how we're going to be able to enforce uh, a ban on somebody walking down the sidewalk with a cigarette. Um, or somebody who stops and just suddenly lights up a cigarette. Um, I, I have really come down in my mind at this point on, um, on a, a good, strong look at uh, restricting smoking in outdoor public eating areas in the city of Glendale. Um, I did not feel that way initially, and let me tell you what the concerns are in my mind about that. Um, when the city of Los Angeles first uh, created its first smoking ban, uh, that was, you have to think back a ways, that was before the, uh, the statewide uh, ban, and, uh, and the city council voted that in, and what happened was uh, total non-acceptance of that smoking prohibition. Instead, what happened uh, was exactly what was predicted. Smokers voted with their feet, and they left the city, and they uh, went to eat lunch, breakfast, and dinner across the border, in Beverly Hills and other cities that didn't have the smoking uh, ban, which was just about everywhere at the time, um, uh, there was not uh, uh, acceptance of that by and large. When it changed and everybody got on the same page was when we had a statewide ban, and suddenly it, it, we were all in the same boat together. And uh, you couldn't just hop over the border into Glendale from Los Angeles and smoke. Um, my concern initially was that if we do this here, we're going to seriously damage our small businesses in a time when the economy is pretty bad, when people are pretty upset. And uh, on top of that, um, uh, we don't have a – we don't have uh, – we're not surrounded by cities uh, that have done the same. However, I can't help but think that if I walked into – uh, walked up to a restaurant and was seated in an outdoor smoking area. And uh, maybe I might pick on, I, I know we have a couple of police officers here, um, so let me, let me uh, pick on the officer in the back of the room there, if I could. <laughs> you think me? <laughs> he, yes, he, sir, agrees. You. he agrees. He <laughs> agrees. Um, if, uh, if I'm a patron in a restaurant and I go out to the sidewalk to, to eat, and I'm sitting there, it's a crowded uh, outdoor eating area, and I reach down into my bag and I pull out a slide trombone. And I start blaring away on the slide trombone, and the manager asks me to stop, and I say no, and they pick up the phone and they call the police, and you arrive, and there I am with it. Um, what are you going to say to me? And then what? Actually, would you come up to the microphone? <laughs> you come on down. Wake him up. You've won a brand new car. Now, this is the first police officer that has been caught like this. He had no idea this was part of the job. Old Forge is sitting over there watching him. So, I'm now sitting uh, outside uh, Gourmet -a Gogo in Montrose, and I take out a slide trombone while people are eating their breakfast, and I'm just blaring away on it. And uh, the manager asks me to stop, and I say, no, and I continue to do that. They call you. You're the responding officer. What do you tell me? I say to quit playing the trombone. And if I say no, or I and don't comply, then it's a misdemeanor. Okay. Um, thank you. And 
happily, that's all I wanted to get from you. The point is, <laughs> the point is, uh, <laughs> the answer is you should have given him a dollar for playing it. <laughs> now, the, my point in all of this is that uh, I'm sitting out there doing that. I'm not injuring the health of the people around me. I'm annoying them. And yet there's an ordinance to cover it. But if I'm smoking out there and I'm injuring other people's health, there is nothing to help them. And that's, but that's I think, the deciding factor for me here. Um, so I, I can't go with my, uh, some of my colleagues on that one. I want to explore that further. And I, think, and I want to ask you also to, to think about the fact that we're not voting on an ordinance tonight. So uh, what we do here tonight might come in and it might not come in, depending on how the votes ultimately end up. Um, that one, I, I'm afraid I'm going to uh, flip-flop in my own head on that one. Um, and uh, I'll take the heat from the, those who prefer to smoke in restaurants, I think, and just go that way. Um, what did I leave out? I've been so busy keeping score of what my colleagues are doing, I lost track here. Yes, sir. Uh, I know it's, I'm kind of going back on what I said, but uh, what if we do the apartments except we do, we start with like 25%, which we start the ball rolling. We did things incrementally, which is, we say 25% has to be absolutely no smoking. That will give a nice 75%. It would allow the apartment owners to kind of try to figure out how to do this. Project will be all debugged and so on and so forth. And then, then come back and ratchet that up to 50% and then later on come up. So do it slowly instead of we do nothing and then go back and say, okay, now 85 percent is. Are you talking about for specifically apartments or? Yes. Oh. So at least we have something in the books, and it allows the industry to start thinking in those directions. It's what Mr. Mincy said, it remind me of something. In the restaurants, originally there was a smoking section and a non-smoking section, and I remember there was a little glass wall that didn't go all the way to the top and you were on this side which was non-smoking and this side it was smoking but slowly some of those things ended up changing and people started getting used to the concept of maybe this is not working we need to go to a total ban on the inside hence now we're on the outside allowing people to smoke outside so they're not inside now we're tightening that ratchet saying you can't even smoke outside. Uh, so what I was trying to get to is in the apartments, we do the same thing, slowly. Give them a chance, 25%. That is very easy to implement because I don't think there's a single apartment building that's 100% smokers. Uh, so then, then we will hear from the apartment owners. Sam will hear it. And we will basically, it will be like a test case. We'll know what it's working. And then... If things are working fine, then you ratchet it up slowly. You think is that a support for that idea? I'm not sure I understand you completely, Mr. Yusefian, to be very honest with you. You're talking about beginning with a 25 percent uh, non-smokers or? Uh, right. Right now we think 85 percent has to be non-smokers. Yeah. I'm saying make the law 25 percent non-smokers. I know it's a low number. It's a low number. But then, I mean, we, we, we do this over a period of time. Well, let me, let me just uh, end my comments by saying that the things I'm going to support at this time are uh, no smoking in common areas of buildings, uh, hallways, balconies, anything that would be typically considered common area. Uh, re ex sidewalk dining or exterior di patio dining, um, uh, parks and city facilities. I can't go along with the uh, with the uh, manipulation of the units inside a con. I'll uh, leave that alone. Well, that's what I'm suggesting right now. Now, maybe as we move along and we hear a, another round of uh, public input when this comes back, maybe uh, maybe I will. Uh, 
will feel differently, but at this I'll time, I, I do have a problem there. How so. would you deal with the, the example you brought as somebody sitting there eating, let's say you're sitting there eating, and somebody walked by and <clears throat> lit a cigarette and started smoking as it walked by? That's okay? Well, I think what we have with this is uh, within so many feet, don't we? If, if, if currently as drafted, correct, but it depends on what the council wants. If the council is really looking at where I'm voting with the ordinance as is are the areas I'm mentioning. Uh, and one of them is the apartment house and the condominium. I don't, I am not ready to move to that point of saying of talking about per manipulating percentages within residency. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm just not there personally. That's yet. fine. I was just. Um, I can go as, I can go with parks and public facilities and city-owned facilities, restaurants, sidewalk and patio dining, uh, common areas within buildings, halls, uh, balconies, and so on. Um, uh, but I, uh, I'm, I'm not ready to go there yet at that last point. Um, commercial buildings are, are already not smoking, is that correct, by state ordinance? A state law with employers. Okay. So how would you, this ordinance, how does it deal with that scenario? Somebody lighting up and walking by. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like what we talked Sam about. Like our freedom. office hasn't had a chance to fully vet the ordinance, but I believe it's 20 feet to within 20 feet of the, uh, the, the either the gathering place, eating place. Was that what it's it was? 20 feet. There's a 20 foot distance regulation between any place where smoking would be permitted as opposed to where it would be prohibited. There's a 20-foot distance. But if somebody's point. just walking with a cigarette in their hands, right. how do By you do the it? ordinance that's in front of you, it's prohibited because it's on all public places. But right. that's not... Yeah. That, I think all of you are discussing something different than that. Mr. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to point out the ordinance as drafted prohibits smoking in the public right-of-way Unless you're on a street in an automobile, for example, the sidewalks, for example. right? Sidewalks, for example, would be prohibited. What I hear the what I hear the bulk of the council saying is prohibit it in eating establishments, but not go so far as to prohibit it in the public right of way, unless that's within a certain distance of an eating established outdoor dining establishment. Okay, that is that is what I'm saying. Okay, okay, got it. And and I might just well, clarify. I would take the public facilities, parks, and grounds, for example, at the libraries, to include the grounds around the libraries, mm -hmm. not necessarily the sidewalks, but the grounds around the libraries, like the uh, tree well at the main library, for example. Right. Okay. I mean, we, we have a deed of trust right. that no, says it would be everything, this, this would be everything but, but the public right of way. The we sidewalk wouldn't the, count, but yeah. all the grounds would. All right. Right. All right. Um, do I have other in input from my colleagues, Mr. Quintero, Mr. Njari? Mr. Mincy? No. Ms. Prazian? Mr. Weaver? Is that all? Okay. Can I uh, entertain a motion? Uh, I would like to uh, move for counsel as stated by Mr. Drayman. Second. Does the city attorney understand? Uh, I think we've got good direction. I've been taking notes. I'm sure Mr. Starbird has and Mr. Engel has as well. To clarify, then, apartments are not out. They simply require more investigative. What I'm hearing right now is no to the interior of apartments except for those areas that are common areas, like hallways. No additional study, then. Ms. Mary, I tried to do a little cheat sheet. Do you want me to try and hit the high points? Good luck, Mr. First one I had was, but yes. Was public, <laughs> here, let me do the easiest one first. Public facilities, parks, grounds, etc. That was all yes. Uh, public dining areas and within some reasonable distance of a public dining area uh, that had support uh, multi-family was support for just the common areas hallways I heard balconies at one point I did uh, mm -hmm. absolutely that would be included. Heard, okay well a, a question for the city attorney if I may in a con in most condominiums a balcony is considered common area or in many. No, it's actually, uh, actually, actually well actually in my area. building let me tell you it is uh, it, and it, so I live in one of those old-fashioned Old, 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 old trust me, old building. Yeah, yeah. I, you so it would not be you considered. You usually see that. Normally it's part of the right. ind individual private. unit, which is considered private. Matter of fact, in, in my building, the maintenance and repair of the balconies are also uh, the province of the. 
So we might want to clarify that. We can always include the ordinance and clarify when it comes back, but I think the balconies may be a question. Okay. Uh, then, uh, of course, there was a question of the manipulation and, and uh, configuration of units, no interest going there, and the, uh, the extension to the public rights of way, which was everything unless you're in a car uh, and no interest in going there. So sidewalks? Everything well, the, the ordinance as drafted prohibited smoking in the public rights of way, with an, which would mean sidewalks and streets unless you're in an automobile or a designated smoking area. Correct, Sam? Mr. Sarber, the council, and one other thing, unless you were the only person out there right. and there was nobody else around, since a non-smoker would come up, you would have to stop as the ordinance is right. presented. I'm confused. Not smoking on the streets it prohibited the it prohibited smoking in the public right I think what light. Mr. Weaver is asking what is the consensus you're hearing the consensus yeah, is I'm, I'm that hearing, you'd be able to smoke on the sidewalk yes. within 20 feet of a dining right. area not in a di right. Right. exterior right. dining the prohibition area prohibition would be not within some distance 20 feet of an of a public dining area okay huh. Mr. Uh, Mr. City Attorney it does raise the question though this different this difference between apartments and condominiums I don't know. Do we have consensus on the balconies of condominium units? I I, I wasn't into the condominiums. I understood right. that this was supposed apartments. And, and that's, right. that's why I'm asking the question because I, what I heard was that the whole issue of common areas, including balconies of apartments. But if the consensus is I had to draw a distinction between balconies and apartments, but maybe you want to make one. Certainly, apartment, apartment owners have an ability through their or condo owners through their association have the ability to impose their own regulations. My concern is that if we start manipulating the the smoking within people's residences, we're going to drive them out onto the balcony, which I think mm -hmm. is going to create even more trouble for for uh, non-smokers who live in those buildings. I would. I, as I said, I am not ready to. I'm ready to support the other things. I am not ready to support the the interior of, of uh, condominiums. And the reason I mentioned balconies was just in my own head. In my particular building, the the balconies are the province of the HOA, including the maintenance of. You have exclusive use. Yeah. Based upon. Uh, yeah. Based upon the mm -hmm. deed or the CCNRs. Yeah. It's just a very very old set of. Uh, Regulations for an old, old older building. When so I say I, old, I mean. So I think the story remains a question as to how yeah. how you want us to craft yeah. it for balconies. Uh, yeah. Well, let's just quickly find out what kind of what there is consensus for and what there is not. And and maybe as you go through, Mr. Mayor, do we apply the same uh, restrictions to apartments and balconies? I mean, apartments and condos. Current, current. Excuse me. Currently, as the ordinance is drafted, it does not regulate right. smoking in condominiums. Oh, it does not. Right. As so drafted so now. Speaking oh, specifically oh. of apartment houses, may, apartment. may we? find out where you are with balconies just so we can lay this to rest. We? I think as far as condos is concerned, no, no. you've got to leave them alone. Apartments. As far as apartments, balconies, just balconies apartments. should be included. Mr. Yusefi. No. The student attorney. No smoking on the balconies. Mr. Quintero. No smoking on the balconies. Obviously, I don't want the smoke. Mr. Brazian. Okay. I think you have consensus on the balcony okay. issue. Very uh, good. Yes, sir. May I just throw one more thing into it? Bus stops? It yeah, should include no the, smoking in bus stops. The the ordinance as currently drafted will, would prohibit smoking at places like bus stops, uh, queue lines, for example, even if they extend the right away, so an ATM ATMs. machine that may be right on the sidewalk, uh, there wouldn't be smoking in an ATM machine or a bus stop or lines like at the marketplace where you line up on the sidewalk to get <coughs> bike tickets to the I'm, theater. I'm not I'm not into the queue lines. That's very difficult. Bus stops. Everybody understands where it is. It's marked. There's a bench. There's a sign. All we have to do is put a little sign that says no smoking. It's very difficult to put a, you know, a sign next to an ATM machine and you trying to get in. So. All right. Q lines, Mr. Mr. Mincy. It's okay. Whatever it's you want to do. It's not as just important <laughs> to me. Is the okay. Bus stops. Mr. Nijon. Bus stops is real important. Item. Bus stops. Yes. No Q line smoking. What about bus stops? No bus stops. Okay. Uh, bus stops and queue lines both. I know where you are, Mr. Weaver. You've made it clear, Ms. Brazen. Bus stops, but for two lines, I don't... No, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No bus stops, but for two lines, um, I, I don't care. So... Queue lines, you mean? You don't care? Yeah, I don't care. You don't care. Okay. And I'm just fine with both, so... so it looks like it's in. 
What was Mr. Yusefian's position on this? Bus stops. Bus stops. Bus stops. Okay. Here. So so you've got you've got three for I mean the city council acts on this. You've got three for bus stops and queue lines. At least three for bus stops and queue lines. Clarify, kids. I'm walking down the street on the sidewalk. I can smoke. The way it's coming. Not marijuana though. No. So he goes for a game for that. Let let me finish my statement. So theoretically, I'm walking down Brand. Go past Damon's. And I'm smoking, and I'm going to go past Portos Bakery. Now, within 20 feet, so when I get within 20 feet of all those outdoor tables, I will put out my cigarette, right. dispose of it in a correct location, walk past Damon's, go 20 feet, I mean past Portos, and then light up again if I wish. Is that the way we're going to talk about so it? So far, if you wish. Speaking. If oh you boy, wish that'll so. be a humdinger. <laughs> Or you can get in the sidecar of your friend's motorcycle. That's true, too. <laughs> one way to skip uh, On our checklist, how are we coming? Are we there? I think we're there. I'm okay. not sure of other categories we haven't covered. We've held the major ones. Okay. And some are of the minor ones. Are you for lines? I'm for both, yes. Now, we had, support, we had enough support for both queue lines and bus stops. All right. Um, okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second for the council motion. Mr. City Clerk, could you call the roll? Council members in the charion? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Since this is to give direction and it leaves out apartments and sidewalks, I vote no. Yusefian? I'm not going to mince words over queue lines. Fine. I think we're going to have a problem. I'll take that as a yes. Yes. You got it. Mayor Draymond. Uh, yes. Okay, now for the agency. Same motion. Pertaining to the Americana at Brand. Oh, wait, this is different. This is different. Mm-hmm. The motion of 1B it. would authorize the city manager to prepare, or actually staff, to prepare an amendment to the, the current reg- declaration of our reciprocal covenants, agreements, and conditions for the project to essentially allow the uh, declaration of no smoking in the greens, the common area. But just no Americana? smoking except in designated areas. And I think there's two areas that he's designated currently. If that's what you want. Is, what, is it, what does the agency feel about that? Well, is that is that something that the agency should do? It's, our, it's it? our agency-owned open space. Yeah. The, the, essentially, the greens is that part that we but, control. But as distinguished from and that's right, the restaurants are city included. property or areas that you otherwise regulate. So just to make sure the, the, the circle is, is closed, we added this item for the redevelopment to make sure somebody doesn't, wouldn't say, well, wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't technically a city park facility or grounds. It's owned by the redevelopment. This is the interior agency. where the grass is and the water feature just there. Not the outdoor dining. No, not the outdoor dining. This uh, separately, if they vote on this, they can give direction to implement. I mean, the, the not, ordinance no smoking you propose is going to cover all. Ask, uh, just, just we'll let's, cover let's, let's stop for a moment. I have the city attorney talking, the city manager talking, my colleagues talking all at once, and I'm not able to follow. Let's start with the city attorney, city manager, and then the council. Mr. Starbird is correct. The ordinance that we will bring back, if adopted, will cover this. However, if you want to deal with this now separately, we can deal with that administratively through this motion. All right, Mr. City Manager. I agree with the city attorney that I'm correct. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lansfam, do you agree with the city manager? Mr. Mayor, who I absolutely city? agree with both of them. Uh, um, but the designated uh, spots that we referenced in the staff report are on private property that's controlled by Caruso. They're designated because they want people to go there to extinguish their cigarette or, or finish before they come into into the greens. This motion would would regulate or would allow us to revise the rules and regulations that regulate the agency owned property. And that's where Mr. Starbird and Mr. Howard are correct. So until such time as you adopt an ordinance that would ban them, <coughs> that's where they would have those those places for people to smoke and then extinguish their cigarette before coming on. So, so just for clarity here, um, I'm a smoker. I arrive at Americana at Brand. We don't yet have an ordinance, uh, but when we do, assuming that it goes forward the way the consensus was, just for theory, where can I smoke? You would probably be able to smoke on the corner of Orange 
and Caruso Avenue, where there's one of those designated spots. There's outdoor dining up at Frida's, where there's another designated spot. And I believe there's outdoor dining at uh, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, where the third one is. So those would be prohibited. So the so outside the dining, coffee. when you say outdoor dining, outdoor dining. are you talking about, about the, the dining that's out on the brand side or on the interior of the... On the interior. So if you were at Granville, which also has exterior dining... Right. There... What would happen would, to you there? You wouldn't be able to smoke there, but that's because not... Because it's not a designated area. Correct. Okay. Well, I guess that begs another question, though. Phil. <laughs> Sorry. The the, the America the greens the common owned the uh, the common open space. You smoke there now. There are no smoking signs. There are certain areas, as we outlined in our report, 20 feet from the playground, and then there's that's some other, the, the top lot. other state That's the tot lot limitation under state but, law. But our rules do not prohibit that as currently and, drafted. And that's what this motion that would correct. allow you to do is to change those rules. The city manager can administratively change those rules to prohibit smoking throughout the greens or in designated areas. There are designated areas that Caruso has already designated that are, under, are not under our control. Mr. City Manager. I'm just going to point out that we, we, we were talking about the Americana, but as I recall in the ordinance, Sam, uh, smoking areas can be designated within malls, shopping malls. So whether it's the Americana or the Galleria, if the owners desired, there could be areas, smoking areas designated within, under the ordinance, uh, commercial establishments designated as malls. So that we'd be back to our nicotine bubble somewhere. We could be back to our nicotine bubble. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair? Weaver. Well, for the chair, I mean, for the agency, I was going to, as an interim, move 1B. Okay. Sure. Mr. I, I have an issue. I like to have an ordinance that basically says you can't smoke at all in the Americana well, because I'll, I'll tell you what's happening we went to Cheesecake Factory somebody next door asked if they could smoke they brought in an ashtray put it in front of that person and the person just lit up well, I'm for the full band you know hey, that. Mr. City Manager. Uh, if I can Scott will correct me but <clears throat> With, if the ordinance is adopted and becomes effective as the majority seems to wish, uh, that wouldn't be able to happen at the Americana because you would have prohibited outdoor dining, you would have prohibited the redevelopment area, you would have prohibited it within, the, within 20 feet of dining and in commercial establishments open to the public. That's 1B. Well, oh, one, no, yeah. that would be an ordinance. But again, 1B is kind of a belts and suspenders approach to make sure that before the ordinance is adopted, it can be, smoking can be regulated at the Americana, and somebody can't try to jump to the loophole that, wait a minute, that's agency property, not Caruso's property, and that sort right. of thing. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm right. talking about 1B. Right. One, one B is the belts and suspenders. I think Mr. Yusevin is saying any smoking in there, this this one won't do that. It'll take the ordinance to follow. It will that, take care of it. That's that's so right. can that's we correct. do the whole right. thing now in the Americana? I think that's, that's what, what I'm say. saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to wait for... 1A. I think the answer was no. Because 1A not hasn't, the, hasn't, the hasn't even been done. Can't, the, the answer is no. The answer is no. That's that not on the agenda. Right. What's on the agenda before you is the proposed ordinance for discussion and direction, and then the administrative the, the administrative component to allow staff to, essentially Mr. Starboard administratively, to amend the, the rules to prohibit smoking in the agency-owned property. We can easily bring you back uh, an ordinance that deals with the Americana, but again, you run into the same kind of issues that you run into tonight. The other one. Right. All right. It's, it's too bad. Two months ago, I asked for a blanket overlay. Mr. Chair, do we have a, uh, a motion? Uh, Mr. Weaver made the motion. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He did. Okay. Did Mr. record Seven. a second. No, uh, yes, yeah, as is. Okay. I guess we can't do anything Let, else. Let's take roll. Agency members, Draymond? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Yusefian? Aye. Chairman Najarian? Yes. Okay. Move to adjourn for council. Second. Move to adjourn for the agency. Second. Move to adjourn for the housing. Second. We adjourn. Okay. Thank you all for